Hello everyone, this is Ray Space, and welcome back to Realism Mobile Hall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. This is gonna take some explaining. This is an enlarged mini star, which is in turn a small venture star. Uh, it is not meant to go to orbit directly from a runway. I'm just doing a flight test here to make sure that it eventually can land at least. Uh, but it's actually not meant to be able to take off. It just so happens that it can. Uh, well, when it's under fuel, of course. You can see there's relatively little fuel inside of it right now. It has two aerospike engines on the tail, somewhat similar to the X-33, uh, but they are larger engines, so uh, think of it as a small venture star. It's better that way. Uh, and there's a lot going on with it. So the Mini Star is a second stage, a recoverable second stage, that sits on the back of the Orion carrier plane, which is the first stage. The Orion carrier plane lands downrange, the Mini Star makes orbit with a 45 ton payload, and then lands back down after deorbiting. Uh, but I decided that, well, there we have a flame out with the engines, so that's going to make things difficult. But I decided that, well, what if we didn't have a payload and we made the Mini Star just a little bit bigger by 45 tons, let's say. Then we have room for a cockpit, we have room for a cargo bay, and we have room for lander engines. So this has all that. Uh, it still has the same two aerospike engines, which are quite enough. Uh, because, you know, it's got hydrogen, oxygen, fuel, so a lot of the volume is taken up by hydrogen, and hydrogen isn't very dense, and so uh, even though it looks big, it's relatively light. Unfortunately, not very easy to turn, and at this point, nose heavy. So it, it should be able to nose up here, but it can't. So the center of mass is too far forward, and that's one of the many, many things I had to adjust for and we are going to fix, but that's why I flight tested it, so I will fix that. It is relatively heavy, uh, considering its size. It sits on the back of another space plane, after all, so it's not huge. Um, overall, the fueled mass of it is about twice the mass of the space shuttle. Uh, its unfueled mass is actually still two-thirds the mass of the space shuttle. Here, I'm trying to add mass to the wings to bring the center of mass back. So I'm actually nerfing it a little bit. Uh, so I've added some mass, but I've, I make other tweaks later on as I get more data. But the idea is to get the center of mass and center of lift closer together. It has a cargo ramp there, you can sort of see that there. And also the doors for the landing engines. There are 12 landing engines, and I decided to use the VR35K-A's the upgrade to the RL-10s, but with a short nozzle, so they get less ISP. Uh, but because they're smaller than the RL-10s, they fit a little bit easier. And um, actually, they're underthrust versions of them right now. They're only 100 kilonewtons a piece and 12 of them. So that's the situation. There I'm mounting it to the Orion carrier plane to see how that handles it. And actually, this version of this enlarged mini star, which I've called the Mars star, because the goal is eventually for it to land on Mars, uh, is actually a little bit too big. It has too much volume. And so I'm eventually going to make it smaller. I just can't put all the fuel that I can carry and still have the Orion carrier plane carry it. The Orion carrier plane doesn't have that kind of capacity with it retaining its ability to land downrange at the Bahamas as we are launching from Tampico here. So the Orion carrier plane has to get to the Bahamas that means that it has a limit to what it can carry on its back. That limit's about 180 tons. The volume of the Mini Star was such that it could, I mean, the Mars Star in this case, is such that it could carry way more than 180 tons, so we just need to make it smaller. Uh, it really doesn't need to be as big as it is right here. So, off we go. The Orion carrier plane has no problem handling it up to this point, and I underfueled it in this case to make sure that it was within the carrying capacity. And each of the engines is about a thousand one hundred kilonewtons, each of these aerospike engines, I mean. Not huge in terms of thrust. Um, unfortunately, they were placed a little bit off, and also the lander engines ignited. They weren't supposed to do that. We need to turn those off. Uh, those off and then accidentally staged them as well uh, but yeah plenty of thrust unfortunately placed a little bit wrong they need to be placed a little bit lower so well back to the VAB 
and I shift them down using RCS build aid, which will be necessary again later. For every adjustment I make to the space plane, I'm going to have to figure out something with the lander engines. The lander engines are fixed right now. They, you know, they they are where they are. I can't move them. So I can add lead weight to the space plane or add a sort of descent mode and move the fuel around. Uh, there are multiple tanks front and back to allow for that, but uh, yeah, the balance is a little bit tricky with this. Its center of mass does move when it depletes fuel, so that is a problem. Anyway, still looking good on the back of the Orion carrier plane. The original Venture Star idea also had a center line cargo bay, though it had doors opening at the top like the space shuttle does. So this is somewhat of a return to the original idea except now we have a cargo ramp instead of the upper opening cargo bay doors because this will be landing on the moon or Mars and then we'll have the ramp to roll things out with. Alright, well here you can see the path of the Orion carrier plane that will eventually be landing at the Bahamas and we're continuing on. I just wanted to make sure that it was getting far enough out. And here we are making orbit. Camera turn a little bit awkward there. With plenty of fuel to spare, you'll note. And it should have plenty of Delta V if fully fueled to land on the Moon and Mars and then get back to orbit. This is what the internals look like. I have a hatch for the Kerbals to come out of, but unfortunately the airlock sort of box uh, it was placed a little bit wrong so they couldn't get out. It said hatch obstructed and I still haven't fixed I've been trying to fix it, but I can't figure out what's up with it. Keep placing it in different ways. I decided to test out the balance of the lander engines here. So we've got the doors open and we reorient to the top. We have a docking port at the top to orient by. And of course they're imbalanced. Um, so it's gonna tilt a bit, but it's not as bad as it looks here because I forgot to add the gimbal module to them. So they should be able to gimbal a little bit and that would solve part of the problem, but still need to fix the balance of the Mars Star a little bit. But anyway, that's the progress on the Mars Star idea, a modification on the Mini Star. You might have seen it in my TIPA Future History Timeline if you were eagle-eyed and actually bothered to look at that thing. Uh, I did mention the Mars Star, so you might have figured out that it was coming up at some point. But yes, more work will need to be done, but it's, it's here. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.